everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Collar DM, the channel dedicated to breaking down barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. My name is Howard, as always, and today we are going to be going over Fantasy Grounds Unity, specifically a tutorial for players new to the platform. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in order to present this tutorial on Fantasy Grounds Unity, we're actually going to go over to the computer. Shock, I know. And we're actually going to make a player character, and we're going to talk about the different tools that you're going to be able to utilize as you're playing the game, such as the note-taking tool and how combat generally works. Now, if you have any questions about Fantasy Grounds Unity or anything related to the 5th edition rule set for Dungeons & Dragons, which is the game system that I'm most familiar with, please leave a comment down here in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer those questions. Also, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel, because you'll get notified when other Fantasy Grounds Unity-related tutorials and Dungeons & Dragons content comes out for the channel. All right, so that's enough stalling. Let's go over to the computer. All right, so now that we're over here at the computer, we can actually talk about Fantasy Grounds Unity. So I've already opened up Fantasy Grounds Unity. You're going to need to download the software off of the Fantasy Grounds website, but this is basically what you're going to come on to when you first load up the game. You're going to get a quick start guide, all this stuff. I've already made a campaign here, but if you wanted to uh, create one, you're just going to hit here, create campaign. You're going to pick your rule set. We already have these different rule sets already preloaded as a, into the software, which is really cool. And you, you can give yourself a password. You can give your name, uh, the chat name, your, um, your name or the GM name that you want to use. And you can name your campaign. But we're just going to load one, and I already have one here called test. So we're just going to start this one up. And it's going to take a little bit to load. Now, Fantasy Grounds Unity technically is still in beta. They're still working on optimizing some of the memory and some of the speed issues that are in here. So just be patient. Um, if the screen ever freezes up on you or anything like that, it's more due to the fact that the software needs time to think because it's still trying to be optimized. So uh, we're just going to sit here for a little while longer. There we go. All right, now we're in here. So. Every time you load up the game, unless you decide to um, change this show on load thing, you're actually act going to get this campaign set up. And this is going to allow you to actually pick and choose which kind of content you want to have in here. So you can actually look at the user manual, forums, the quick user guides. If you hit next, you're going to pick your data modules. Now, I already have loaded in the SRD, and I already have loaded in the basic rules. Uh, I don't currently own any of the content on Fantasy Grounds right now because I just, you know, Unity is just coming out, so I want to get some time to play with it, so that way I can teach you guys how to use it. Um, but those are already preloaded in, so we're just gonna hit next. And then we can actually customize some more options if we want to, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, and I'm gonna hit finish, and now we're in here. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see is this screen after you finish uh, picking up and uploading all of your data. Now, right now I'm in GM mode, so I'm actually gonna come over here to the library, and I'm gonna hit create PC, and it's gonna change my menus over here. And this is gonna be a little bit different with uh, your player characters, but right now I'm just gonna show you in GM mode just because it's the easiest. And we're actually gonna make a new PC. So we're gonna hit player characters, we're gonna hit add button. I've already got two already made, but we're gonna make a new one. So now we can get rid of this character selection. And it's gonna upload this pre-made character sheet for you. So now let's give our guy a name. Let's call, um, actually let's get, make it a girl. Let's call her Sarah. So Sarah is gonna be a, um, a, I haven't really decided what she's gonna be. So let's go into classes. Let's see what's gonna sound fun. Now, because I did upload the SRD and the basic rules, it's gonna have some duplicates uh, for some of the classes, but I'm not too concerned about that. They're the same, so it doesn't really change anything. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make her a ranger. So what we do is we actually just grab this ranger and we can actually see here what is involved with the ranger, what kind of things we get, the proficiencies we get, what we get as we level up. And we actually can click and drag this ranger over here. You can see that I have a closed fist on this little dot here. And when we bring it up to class and level, it'll automatically populate. And then it's gonna ask us what skills we wanna be proficient in. So I'm gonna pick Oh, animal handling, nature, and perception, sure. And we're gonna hit check. And now we're already proficient in those abilities. And you can see it's already populated some of the things we're proficient in. So we're proficient in strength and dexterity saving throws. If we go over to skills, it's already gonna have checked off animal handling, nature, perception. If we come back here, we can actually change our ability scores, which I didn't do right off the bat. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna say we're gonna play human. Uh, so we're actually gonna Go to races, let's grab the human from the basic rules, let's drag it into the race. It's gonna add one to all our ability scores. So then I'm gonna take the, um, I'm gonna take the standard race, so 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight, and I'm gonna distribute them. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put my 15 here, so our dex is gonna become a 16. Our constitution, let's say, is gonna be 13, so that's gonna become a 14. Our wisdom's gonna be that 14. And then, so I've got 15, 14, 13. 
So for 12, let's say intelligence, because I did pick nature as a skill, and then 10 is going to be our charisma, so that stays as an eight, as an 11, and then we'll make our strength a 9, because I don't really care about strength with this particular character, because I'm going to be using a lot of ranged weapons. So now we already have this, and like I said before, it's already populated. So without any um, input with armor or anything else like that, sorry if uh, my mic just exploded on you guys, um, we actually have an AC of 13 because that comes from that base equation of 10 plus our dexterity. But we can change that with some of the stuff we're going to get from our ranger class. So I'm actually going to keep the ranger up here so that way we can actually see what we get and we'll go fill that stuff in later on. Now we gotta pick a background. So let's go into backgrounds. And now this is gonna kind of change how we wanna maybe play the game. Um, from a role playing perspective, I'm just gonna pick the, um, let's pick the folk hero background. Actually, before I do that, let's actually, oh, I made a duplicate. So let's uh, get rid of that item. And let's click on folk hero. So what do we get? Uh, we get animal handling survival. Well, I already took animal handling. So maybe I don't want this one. Maybe let's see what the spy gets us. Spy is gonna get us deception and stealth. Great, perfect. That sounds great for me. And you can actually, again, oh, I duplicated it again. So you gotta be careful. Sometimes when you drag things, it'll make it, it'll drag and drop it in. So it'll make it twice. So this will give you an idea of like kind of the different things you're proficient in. That's kind of what you get for tools and stuff like that. The equipment you get. And I'm actually gonna keep that here because we'll see why in a second. There's a little bit, like I said, it's still in beta. So there's some things and features that they need to add. So this might work, get at me. I'll give you some suggestions. Um, but um, it'll actually tell you like what you should actually be thinking about, what kind of uh, player character you could be. Uh, a lot of criminals are villainous to the core, but some have abundance of endearing, if not redeeming characteristics. And they might be there might be some honor among thieves. And you can actually see um, what our equipment's gonna be. So I'm gonna leave that here again, like I said. And we're gonna take this spy background and we're gonna drag it into that background section and boom, it's already in there. It's again, added our proficiencies here. And if we actually go to abilities, it'll say that what our proficiencies are. Um, it does say we get one gaming set and these tools. So I'm gonna actually put in, if it's gonna let me do it, and we gotta think a little bit, there we go. I'm going to put playing cards in here just because um, just because that's one we can actually pick. And then languages, I'm just going to pick Draconic. Sure, why not? Now, the one thing I haven't figured out yet, and it doesn't seem like there's any functionality, is to actually drag um, your tool proficiencies and add them into your skills somewhere. Now, that's something that I'm hoping that they actually do change in the game. But if you need to look at it, just check here, and then you can do the math equation out later on down the line. And then now we can get rid of this background tab. So this is everything we have here just from picking our background and our character. Now let's go down to our inventory. So you saw from here, if we scroll down here a little bit, we're actually gonna get to choose. Oh, and I do need to change my hit points. So it says that my max HP is actually 10, but because we changed our constitution there, uh, we're actually gonna add that plus two now and we're gonna make this 12, boom. And then we're gonna look for our equipment. So we can pick scale mail or leather armor. So in order to do that, we're actually gonna come over here into items, give it a chance to think a little bit. Nice blue spinning circle. It's gonna say not responding, but it's actually just thinking. So just be patient. Like I said, there's a lot of data being loaded up in here and there it is. Um, so it does need time to think a little bit. Um, and like I said, they are working on kind of expediting the memory a little bit as we go forward. And so the first thing we need to pick is leather armor or scale mail. I'm going to pick leather armor. So what I recommend, instead of going through all of these and trying to find it, just type in leather armor. And I'll think, and then it's going to give you all the different choices you have here. Now, if we want just regular, oh, it doesn't want to give me regular leather. So I'm just going to put leather. There we go. Let's see what happens if I just drag it over here. It, yep, it is actually our AC. So if we come back here, it's already added in there. So for whatever reason, the basic rules just call it leather. Um, because if you look at the table, I, I know why. It's because when you look at the tables in the uh, SRD and stuff like that, it actually just lists like armor types, light armor, and it just says leather and hide and studded leather. It doesn't actually say leather armor. So that's why you see gl glamored studded leather here. If we scroll down here, but it just says stud. Yeah, so that's why it just says that. So that's why we have it the way it is. And... Um, we have that. So now we get to pick two short swords or two simple melee weapons. So I'm just going to put in short sword. Hit enter. And then look at that. We have all of our short swords here. And we're going to actually take that, bring it over here. I need to be on inventory. So remember that. You need to be on inventory to make this work. So drag the short sword in. And let's drag another short sword in. So now we have two. 
And then when we come down to our actions, it's already gonna populate. Hey, look, we have a short sword already on here. All right, so then let's see what else we get. We get a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. Let's just say we want a Dungeoneer's pack. So we're just literally gonna type in again, Dungeoneer. And it's gonna pick up Dungeoneer's pack. We're gonna, so you can see what's in it. Then you go to your inventory, drag and drop, boom. It's in there and it calculates the weights for you. So that way you know how much you can carry. And you can see our maximum lifting ca capacity is 135. We're already getting kind of close. So something to keep in mind as we're kind of going through this. And then we're gonna get a long bow, drag and drop. And we're gonna get 20, or uh, let's just put an arrow. Brings up arrows, we'll throw it in there. Instead of adding one at a time, we can just throw in 20, boom, it's in there. All right, so that's those. And then we're gonna now click out of the ranger here. And we're gonna come down to our spy because our spy is gonna give us some stuff too. So we're gonna get a crowbar, a set of common clothes, including a dark hood and a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. So. Uh, for treasures, you're going to actually have to put in um, the individual treasure kinds because it doesn't automatically populate it for whatever reason. So we're going to put copper pieces, silver pieces, electrum pieces, gold pieces, platinum pieces, and then whatever else you want to add here. Maybe you have different kinds of uh, treasure in your game. And we're going to start out with the 15 gold pieces. So we'll just throw that on there. And then we are going to get a crowbar and a set of common clothes, of dark common clothes. So let's see if I can find that dark common clothes. I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to find that. But let's try it. Let's throw in common clothes. Nope, we didn't get that. Let's try common. Clothes, common. Yeah, see, so some of the things that are listed are a little bit weird. So we're just going to throw it in here. And then we can actually put in here dark with a hood so that way it's included so easy enough there and actually because my OCD is gonna make me do it I'm gonna put a capital H there and then let's see we're gonna look for a crowbar so let's find crowbar boom crowbar awesome drag and drop now we already got one in the Dungeoneers pack but hey we're gonna have another one so cool enough and then that's it and then we have some features in here but these features are gonna be in right here in our abilities so we can actually go over here to the criminal contact we can click on it it's gonna bring it up here. We have a reliable contact to, um, that helps us in our network of criminals. We have a favorite enemy. We can actually pick our favorite enemy. Um, I'm gonna put in here, because we are a ranger and we get our favorite enemy early, I'm just gonna put dragons. And then natural explorer, I believe we can pick one environment. Yes, we do. Uh, we can pick a bunch of different environments. Uh, I'm gonna pick mountains, sure. So that's how I recommend if you have like some of these different features that you need to add to, like the Ranger specifically does, I just recommend typing it in. So that way it's basically here for note taking for your sakes. Now, again, our inventory is all set. We can take notes on our personality traits and stuff like that, what our gender is. So our Sarah is a female, we'll say she's like 20, 25 years old, not 220. Let's say she's five foot eight, sure. And her weight's 125 or something like that. I don't know. I'm not very smart when it comes to that. So, um, And then we're going to say her alignment. We'll just say she's neutral good. She doesn't have a deity, so we're not going to worry about that. So personality traits. So this is where we can actually come in here. So we have these different tables that we have on the spot for the spy. And we're actually going to come over here to this table. We can click on it. And then we can actually roll on the table. See what we get. So we got a two. So... I'm always calm, no matter what the situation, I never raise my voice uh, for my emotions control me. Now, you can, you don't have to always use um, the rolled ones, but you just grab the text here, you bring it over to personality traits, it fills it in for you. So again, really nice that you can kind of just drag and drop everything in here. Let's go to the spy ideal. Let's, yeah, let's roll on the table, we'll see what we get. Three, charity, I steal from the wealthy and help the people in need. So this person clearly is neutral good for some reason, even though she's a criminal, it's kind of weird. And let's see, spy bond, let's roll. Two, my ill-gotten gains support, go to support my family. There you go. So again, still kind of like a very nice uh, character still. And then five, I turn tail when things look bad. Okay, so we have one flaw, that's not too so great. And then we can talk about our appearance. We can put some notes in here for her, whatever the case may be. And then you have a character log here where you can actually make some notes on different adventures that you have. You just click that little button, add an item, and you can write a little note in there. Um, and then you can type in whatever you want, stuff like that. So we'll lock that in there. So now it won't be edited or it won't be deleted at the very least. You can actually click on this and delete it still. 
um, if you choose to. You can pick what faction she's in, um, whether she's in like, a, I don't know, the Predators Alliance or some crazy thing like that. Um, up to you. And then, oh, whatever reason. Yeah, so you can actually roll your hit dice on here and it makes it easier for you. So um, it's really cool. And it'll already automatically recover your, hit, your HP gain too. So, and you'll see what I mean by that here in a second. Um, so we can see here we have WND max and temporary, and this is related to HP. We have um, wounded HP, which basically means how much damage did you take? It gets populated there. Our max HP and then our temporary HP if we have any extra HP from something. All right, so that's setting up our character. Um, she doesn't have any special moves or anything like that or any special senses because she's a human, but she has a passive perception here of 14. And I believe if we double click on it or we can, we might be able to actually drag and drop it into the chat. So that way we can tell, hey, our passive perception is 14, Mr. GM. So something to keep in mind there. Sorry if my light gets a little crazy, apparently. The way it's plugged in is a little funny. Um, and then you can see on here we have inspiration. We have we can actually upload tokens and stuff like that. So now that's the thing we're going to do next. We're going to figure out tokens. Now in order to figure out what our character is going to look like and if you have any art already pre-uploaded, we're going to come over here to the assets tool. And we're going to go to portraits. I'm going to click on data. And this is going to actually have all the different data for the different portraits that are available in, as part of the game. So you have some for Fantasy Portal that has some different pictures right here. If we actually go back up again, go to data, Smiteworks. Smiteworks also has some really much better photos in my opinion. So I'm gonna try and find one that I like. Um, we have an elf rogue. Where's our humans? Humans, human bard, human wizard, human. Apparently all the humans are males for some reason, which I don't necessarily agree with, but um, let's just pick this elf rogue because it kind of looks the closest. And we can throw that um, portrait in there. And then if we go click out of that, go back to assets, we can go to tokens. We can actually look up, and I'm just gonna look up Ranger and see what we get. Nope, uh, let's try Rogue. All right, we got some Rogues here. Um, let's see what we like here. Um, now, inherently, it's gonna actually populate your token the same way. It's gonna throw it right over here, um, as same as your portrait, but I want a different one. So let's try, let's see, this is human female. She looks okay, she's got daggers in her hand. Um, but like I said, this is where you kind of have to like kind of play around with it. You can actually find and upload your own tokens if you purchase them as well. So now we have that. So now she has a token assigned to her. Now, if we want her to be involved in combat, we actually have to add her to this combat tracker. As we can already see, we've got some people in here. I'm actually going to delete this unidentified creature because I don't want that there. And we're actually going to click on her portrait, drag her over here, and she's going to get populated into this combat tracker. Now, they don't have initiatives yet, but we'll see how that works in here in a second. So if we want to start a combat... Um, we're actually going to, I want to throw this a little bit off to the side here a little bit, and I'm actually going to switch my modes cause I'm going to need to. So we're going to come over. Oh, I clicked on spell. So we might have to take a little while now. Uh, yeah, we're stuck here. So it's going to, it's going to populate all the spells in the game. So, um, that's something to keep in mind as we're going through this. Uh, it will, like I said, it's going to load everything up and yeah, say spells. I don't need that. So. Um, let's just double check one thing. I want to make sure. Yeah, Rangers get spellcasting at level two, so we don't have to worry about that. But kind of the same thing applies. So if we actually bring up Sarah, let's see if we can bring her back up. Are we thinking? No, we're not thinking. All right, so let's bring up Sarah. Let's say Sarah had some spells. So let's, oop, I clicked on skills. So again, this thing's a little clunky sometimes, but, um, and it has to think a little bit, but, and I might be limited to, limited to what I have on my computer. So keep that in mind. But after it loads in, it'll, um, it'll actually bring it all in here. Oh, what did I do? Hmm. Oh, it's thinking about, yeah, there we go. I had to populate all this stuff. All right. So let's say we want acid arrow on her spell list. We're going to throw it over here and boom, it populates in there for you. So um, and it automatically puts it in there. And then if we wanted to cast it, I'll show you guys that in a second, but we'll leave it like that for now. Um, you know, she doesn't have spell casting at level two. We're going to leave her like that. And then let's say if we want to start combat. So I'm going to switch over. I'm going to switch my library, my little thing over to GM. So that way I can see everything over here. And we're going to go to, I'm going to bring in a map that I already have loaded in here. Underdark tunnels. Boom. And as you can see, I already have some guys already loaded on here, so. And then we're gonna throw Sarah on the map as well. Maybe. Boom, there, now Sarah's on the map. And I already got a, um, 
an encounter already clicked on here. So as a GM, I can go into my encounters and I have a dragon encounter. So I'm gonna drag and drop that into the combat tracker. Boom, it already populates it for me. Boom, easy enough. So for GMs, this is great also. Um, and then we're gonna throw this blue dragon wormling onto the map here. We can throw our green dragon wormling on the map here. Let's drag him back over, drag him back over. And as you can see, when you're operating the different monsters, it'll actually click and uh, actually open it up for you. So then, now let's say we want to start a combat. So let's go over here to combat. Let's, uh, no, sorry. I'm gonna roll initiatives for everyone. Oh, come on. Initiatives, roll for everybody. Oh, I cleared them for everybody. Hold on. Uh, roll initiatives, there we go. All right, so Sarah's first to act. So what Sarah's gonna do, let's say she wanted to shoot her bow. So she's gonna actually, we'll open up Sarah's character sheet here. I have to kind of do it a little bit clunky because I am the GM doing everything, so it's going to be a little funny. So let's say we want to shoot our longbow at this green dragon wormling. We actually will grab this little dice. We'll actually come over the green dragon wormling. And actually, let me... It's going to roll for me. And then we're going to... It rolled for me, but that's not what I want. So we're going to click on that dice. We're going to come over the green dragon wormling. We're going to let go. And it's actually going to tell us... All right, so we rolled an 11 plus 5, 16, so we actually missed this guy. But if we hit, let's say we hit, we're actually going to drag this dice, and we're going to throw it over on the green dragon wormling, it's going to roll it, and it's going to do the damage. And then if we actually go back to our initiative tracker here, we can see that this green dragon wormling took 5 damage under this wound category. So he's already at 33 HP. So as you can see, the combat like in GM modes is a little clunky, especially when you're trying to control the player characters yourself. Um, but if you're just controlling the enemies and stuff like that, it makes it easy. So let's hit the next person in the combat order. All right, so we have Jeffrey. Let's say Jeffrey comes up here. He wants to attack this guy. Um, we'll say he rolls. Let's say he misses. And we'll say that Uman the human uh, comes back up in here. And he actually, he's a wizard. So he's actually going to come back here. Let's say he tried to cast a spell. He missed. All right. So then we come over to the blue dragon wormling. So everything for the GM is already in here. So let's say this guy wants to do lightning breath. So he's going to do his lightning breath at Jeffrey the Barbarian. So I have to actually click on the save hit Jeffrey the Barbarian. There we go. Now Jeffrey's going to roll a saving throw. He rolled a 7, so he failed. So he's going to take damage equal to 4d10 lightning damage. So we're going to drag it over to Jeffrey, throw that damage down. Jeffrey takes 31 damage and he's dead. Boom. Insta-kill. So Jeffrey's gone. Um, so if we come back up here, we see Jeffrey the Barbarian. In fact, it says unconscious, but he's dead because instantly dead. He took 31 damage. He only has 14 HP. So um, and then we have the next actor. Now we have our green dragon wormling here. He's just going to come down here. He's going to want to try to blow everybody up. So he's going to actually, again, constitution save for Uman the human. He's going to fail. Constitution save for Sarah. She's going to fail. So they're all going to take damage. Uman the human's going to take damage. Uman the human's going to be dead. I bet Sarah's going to be dead too. Yeah, Sarah's going to be dead too. Or she's dying. So she's not dead yet. So... Um, so she's just unconscious, but that just gives you an idea how the combat kind of works. I just wanted to get you, get you guys to see that. So you can actually drag and drop the damage onto people and it already automatically calculated it all out here for you. So let's get rid of, and it'll also actually calculate your death saves for you too. Um, let's say we're going to clear all initiatives. Um, we're going to get rid of this guy. Oh, not you. We're going to get rid of this guy and we're going to, oh, come on effects clear all effects hey everybody's alive we're gonna get rid of the damage boom easy enough so that's combat so then if we want to take notes um, for our GM we can actually go into the notes here but if we're a player so we'll switch back over to let's go to our play which is gonna be our kind of pseudo player character mode we can come into notes and we can edit and add notes in here as we wish so we can actually put in here a dragon encounter sure and we'll say the, let's say it's, we want it to be public. Then we're enter text and say like, two dragons appeared, fired breath weapons that appeared to kill the party, but it was all a dream. The dragons then disappeared, sure. So that's the note, we're gonna lock it. So now nobody can edit it when they come in here and then we're gonna click X. And now Dragon Encounter is a note 
over here and it's a public note. So that way if we come out of here, we can click back into our notes and we can change it. And then you can also have private notes too as a player. So you can actually change these out so they don't have to all be player uh, public notes. But if you're a player and you wanna share all those notes, you can do that too. All right, so that's the basic breakdown on how, how a game's gonna work from a player's perspective in Fantasy Grounds. Now let's get off the computer and wrap up our discussion. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna end this tutorial on the basics for player creation and player characters in Fantasy Grounds Unity. I'm sure you guys have plenty of questions. I'm sure there's a lot of other weird scenarios that you wanna ask about. So please, make sure you leave a comment down here in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer your questions. Also, if you made it to the end of the video, make sure you give the video a like. It gives me some good feedback that you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel. Also, subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you get notified when more Fantasy Grounds Unity or any Dungeons & Dragons content comes out for the channel. I hope you guys learned a little bit about Fantasy Grounds Unity from a player perspective, and until next time, I'll see you all soon.